All right. Well, we're, we're going to get started because uh, we have a lot of ground to cover today and very excited to have you meet our three guests and, and learn about the success they've been having integrating eco-design and LCA into uh, their curriculum. And what you're going to hear all of them talk about ultimately is this is all about jobs and the economy. And ultimately, schools who teach environmental sustainability will attract the students uh, and will ultimately be able to meet the industry demand. And manufacturers who want to compete in the marketplace with greener products are going to recruit out of the schools where they're teaching students to execute. So today, uh, we have with us educators from RMIT, San Francisco State, and University of Oklahoma. And I'm going to let each of our guests introduce themselves. I'm going to start by uh, introducing Sustainable Minds. We'll take questions between each of the presenters that are specific to the presenter's content. Um, but the goal is to have uh, a good discussion and, and Q&A at the end. So post your questions at any time uh, during the presentation. And uh, if they are specific to a presenter, uh, we'll get them asked. And otherwise, we'll have a good pool for discussion um, after the three presentations are, are completed. So just a little bit about uh, Sustainable Minds. Uh, we're a cloud software and services company. And in fact, we were the first company to bring product sustainability software to the market. Um, and I'm honored to be able to say that we've influenced a number of the large global software companies to also enter the market. Because all of us have identified that it's time for designers and engineers and business people that create everything we use in the world to be able to design smarter, more sustainable products, services, buildings, systems. Our mission as a company, uh, however, is a little bit different than the other ones. Our mission is specifically uh, to operationalize environmental performance in mainstream product development and manufacturing. And we've done that by bringing together a significant field of practice eco-design, and a field of science, life cycle assessment. And when you bring the two together, you bring innovation and measurement that gets you truly greener products. So you think differently and measure, you get truly greener products. We actually have uh, quite a range of different types of customers, uh, manufacturers, uh, educational institutions, as well as product design, engineering, and business consultancies. And you can see that um, we actually have quite a diversity of uh, educational institutions around the world, actually on every continent, with the exception of Antarctica. Um, and we're thrilled because uh, this really was viral. Um, we've made it easy and cost effective for schools to start integrating environmental sustainability. We actually talk about environmental performance. And environmental performance is driven today by real market demand of resources, regulation, supply chain transparency, competing with brands that are greening themselves. And the real opportunity is through new product innovation to grow businesses through acquiring new markets, new customers, and new revenue. Ultimately, Environmental performance is an innovation driver that should help companies grow by lowering costs and increasing revenues. But companies who want to get this done are going to have to acquire some new knowledge, some new processes, and some new tools. So here's where we tell you, don't be fooled. There's no such thing as a green product. Green is a relative value. Uh, it's all about something being greener than something else. So it's all about comparisons. The so Sustainable Minds is eco-concept modeling software with real-time LCA-based results. We are designed specifically to allow product teams 
to explore new product concepts in the earliest stages of product development and understand the environmental performance implications of the decisions that they make across the product life cycle. Sustainable Minds is based on three pillars. It's software, data, and collaboration, learning and knowledge management, and community. Because ultimately, everybody's learning. You've got to share the knowledge uh, both within your own organization and ultimately outside in the industry. Just to give you a peek into our learning center, um, I thought this would be extra important for educators. Our learning center is um, effectively the equivalent of uh, about a 150-page textbook on eco design and life cycle assessment. This is just the user's guide section. And if I click into the functional unit section, you can see that uh, the content is highly illustrated with examples, uh, case studies. Um, there's just an abundance of, of content to um, help get you and your students uh, up and running very quickly with as much in-depth knowledge as you would like to uh, impart. Again, the software enables you to benchmark and compare. It's for non-experts in life cycle assessment, and it's a standardized system so that everybody is working the same way, measuring the same way, getting the same results. Because we're a cloud application, you can model with any data that you need. Uh, we use data from all the trusted public sources like EcoInvent and NREL, but with many manufacturers and even with schools, uh, we'll add data that's specific to the project that they're working on and specific to their supply chain and even their primary manufacturing data. We have a data browser where you can look and see what data we have. You can always request more. This is useful to look at uh, when you're getting ready to start a project. And just to give you a sense, um, Sustainable Minds is used on simple products to get real uh, real value and real performance improvement, as well as more complex products that have a lot of line items in the system build materials and ultimately reduces things to very simple results where people are able to make decisions about how to make products and move forward. So with that introduction and now you having an overview of Sustainable Mind software, uh, I'm going to invite Layla to kick off the first presentation. Uh, so you can see how she's integrated it into the curriculum at RMIT. Layla. Thanks, Terry. Um, Layla here. Uh, yeah, so basically my background is I'm a product designer and then I went actually and studied social science, majoring in environment and sustainability with an objective of uh, uh, increasing the capacity of the design and product development industry to uh, integrate sustainability considerations. And so a lot of my work to date has been around um, providing um, education platforms and curriculum development as well as just core capacity building and um, access to resources. I have worked as an LCA practitioner for a short time and, and uh, teach life cycle assessment as a strategic decision-making framework for not just uh, designers but also through uh, for business people and uh, managers as well. I lecture at RMIT University in industrial design in Melbourne in Australia and I guess lecture at a lot of other universities around Australia specializing in life cycle thinking and life cycle assessment. I'm currently doing my PhD at the moment as well so I'm pretty into this stuff uh, but I'm going to talk about the work that I've done um, in uh, this particular program that we have at RMIT. Um, our second year industrial design students um, are now required to understand eco-design and life cycle assessment, which is fantastic. Um, but our industrial design program is quite a large one at RMIT. We have uh, between 60 to 80 admissions each year, um, and we have a really strong focus on uh, multifaceted design approaches, so not just product development. We encourage students to understand product system service delivery and uh, really try and give them enough skills to go into a number of different career avenues. But the, the program that I teach is a core design studio. It's called Studio 2. <laughs> it's a second year subject, so it's a four-year program that our students are involved in. 
and it's a first uh, semester. We have two semesters per year, so it's 13 weeks. And we started a couple of years ago. Um, we changed the syllabus to specifically require students to have a, an understanding of eco-design strategies and a little understanding of life cycle assessment. And sustainability um, is accessible in a number of different elective courses to our students as well, uh, but this is the main core sustainability subject that they are introduced to in their program. So what we did was we decided um, it was really important that they understand sustainability um, from a holistic perspective. So they needed to understand life cycle thinking, so theoretically uh, the core understanding of the fact that products go through a series of life cycle stages, different environmental impacts occur at these stages, and the decisions made by the designer ultimately affect um, the number of resources that are extracted and used and the different processes and potential environmental impacts associated with those. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, life cycle thinking side of things. And we also really wanted them to be able to do assessments as well because as um, I'm sure any of us would know, it's uh, doing is much better than just thinking about something. So the software actually really um, uh, allowed us to integrate that at a critical point with the students. So. The way we ran the semester was 13 weeks, so in the beginning they have to identify an area of investigation that they're going to design a product, a socially um, and sustainably motivated product that they could fulfill um, a marketplace with. They also had to make sure that it was viable financially and economically um, relevant to the target market. Uh, and looking at the product systems um, service delivery as well and of course eco-design strategies. So the students would be required to identify a problem, uh, to develop concepts around that problem, and communicate those to the rest of the class who would then assist in selecting one of the products that they would go forward with the design of. And, uh, and then they would actually have to get into the more detailed design stage. And that's when we would introduce Sustainable Mind, because they'd be required to actually find any existing data that was available in their product area um, and create a baseline case study for their product category. And then look at how their design decisions would ultimately have a reduced environmental impact or how they could use design strategies and also the life cycle data to create a more sustainable product. So what we did, I've got some examples of some of the students' work. Um, one student that we had, Dustin, he's, um, he was looking at uh, refrigerators, sorry, there we go, and he looked at developing a, a multi, um, a multifunctional uh, modular refrigeration system for domestic use, specifically trying to address um, the issue of, of food wastage in the home and that being um, related to accessing food and also he wanted to look at energy efficiency and the fact that a lot of people have these oversized refrigerators that um, are basically cooling air. So these are just some of his renderings that he was his final design solution. So um, you know he was a pretty good student. He had some nice um, nice design ideas. But what was really interesting with about his process was was him understanding what it was about his products that actually had environmental um, impacts associated with them. So I got him to do life cycle mapping, um, which is uh, basically where they sit down and they have to conceptually map out all of the different environmental impacts across the life cycle stages of their product. And you can see that from the um, bottom uh, diff little hand-drawn map he's got there. But also doing some brainstorming around the main environmental impacts and the, the sphere of influence that he has as a designer to be able to um, make decisions that would reduce that. So what happened uh, was he then did um, his assessments to figure out uh, the base case. He actually found, uh, published on Google Scholar, a really extensive report, a life cycle assessment report on um, refrigerators and to use that to create a base case and then to model his design alternatives to see how he could make environmentally beneficial decisions. What was really interesting about his project was that um, he had a bunch of assumptions about where environmental impacts would occur and uh, those were actually proven kind of um, wrong when he went through the assessment process. And so that really helped him create design iterations and focus his energy on the appropriate area for him um, to make better design solutions. These are just some of the visuals that he created, so demonstrating how um, that the, the process of life cycle thinking and um, rough life cycle assessment allowed him to make different design decisions uh, that reduced the overall impact of his product. 
And this is some of the communication material that he created as well that looks at the design decisions he made and how the reductions did uh, come from that. So, um, and just some more stuff around his uh, design. So he, he looked at different um, material choices and then how he could reduce those material uh, choices or change them based on the information that was made available through the assessment process. Um, he also had to look at, of course, uh, eco-design strategies as well, which was a really great um, uh, part of our, our program is that it's not just an assessment, um, just not the theoretical stuff. They actually have to look at how they're, as a design um, strategy, they can reduce overall environmental impacts um, across the product life cycle. Another student's work that um, we looked at was another student who developed um, a, uh, uh, something for developing nations, this little grinder here, which was around uh, reducing, uh, being able to access um, a particular food source. And, and just to show you briefly the work that she created going forward. Can't make that move. Don't know what's happened there. Oh, there we go. Oops, went too far. Um, what she actually did was uh, she looked at service delivery and uh, with her product development, what she found through the assessment process was that through dematerialization and material substitution, she could dramatically reduce the overall environmental impact of the product that she was creating, as you can see by this visual, where her original concept through to her revised concept and final concept delivery at the end there. So, I mean, look, these are just some really quick, rough examples of the, the students' work that we had. And we find that students um, really develop a great understanding for life cycle assessments through this process. And the semester really allows them to conceptually understand how they can um, think through environmental impacts and reduce the overall uh, uh, eco uh, kind of footprint of the products that they're creating through using life cycle thinking and life cycle assessment. I think what also we find is that the students, um, their basic level of environmental knowledge increases, which is fantastic. And also there's a, an iterative process as a, as a teacher, you know, the work that my <laughs> students is doing feeds back into um, my learning experience as well and the other, the other teachers that are teaching into the program who aren't necessarily experts in eco-design but have the opportunity to learn from the, uh, the kind of group exploration process that doing life cycle thinking and life cycle assessment allows. Um, so I would just say in, in summary that this, this, this process of integrating sustainability and sustainable um, decision making and assessment into curriculum is certainly becoming uh, a much more important part of the um, industrial design product development um, education system and, and that educators who perhaps haven't had the experience in the past around eco-design and life cycle assessment have now got a lot of um, developed curriculum materials and also resources available to them in different software packages um, and online. Uh, you know, a good Google search and Google Scholar these days pulls up a lot of, of information that can be used in the teaching um, arena. And so it's a really useful way of engaging students with sustainability and a really great uh, starting platform for getting their head around the concept of life cycle thinking and all of the different strategic elements that are involved in um, product design decision making. So that kind of brings me to my conclusion, which is that I think it's a really great opportunity for educators to integrate environmental considerations into the teaching programs and that it's really becoming a really important part of uh, a student's learning experience these days to understand how a designer influences the, um, the, the decisions that they make, influence the material economy and ultimately the environmental impacts of the product in use and end of life. And the services that are now available are really um, making the teaching platform so much easier and it's just a matter of uh, spending a little bit of time in upskilling and, and getting your head around life cycle thinking and it's a, it's a great process to get involved in. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you, Layla. Um, the industrial design courses, uh, the faculty always have the nicest visuals to show. And the work <laughs> that your students are doing is really quite, quite beautiful. And um, I'm definitely going to want to circle back later and ask you a little bit about um, some of the um, life cycle diagramming that you had your students do. 
Um, I don't see that anybody has posted a specific question for Layla, and I think that in that case we'll move directly forward with Mark, uh, who's going to tell you a very different kind of story um, from Layla and uh, equally as stunning. So Mark, take it away. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, I received my doctoral degree in ecology and environmental policy analysis from the University of California, Davis, after which I joined a program here at the University of Oklahoma, which basically conducted interdisciplinary applied policy research. I held a joint appointment in the uh, School of Civil Engineering and Environmental Science, but had an opportunity in 2009 to join the Department of Geography, which was at that time thinking about expanding their scope to include sustainability issues. In this program, I teach undergraduate courses on renewable energy, uh, corporate environmental strategy, and life cycle analysis. Currently, we're developing a master's uh, curriculum in environmental sustainability that uh, is going to be structured as a professional master's degree. Now, my interest in this entire uh, range of issues, uh, Compass Sustainability, started in graduate school and I designed a waste treatment system uh, in a natural wetlands environment and followed up on that by looking in my doctoral research at the economic and energetic uh, aspects of fuel ethanol production. OK, oops, I'm too far. The uh, Environmental Sustainability Degree Program uh, was launched in 2011 and led us to change the name of our department. We offer both the BA and BS options, and we have concentrations in culture and society, planning and management, and science and natural resources. The success of our program has been nothing less than extraordinary. We've doubled our enrollment in six months. We now have over 130 students, 60 of which are ES majors. Our students are highly motivated and enthusiastic, and I'd like to point out that so is our uh, dean's office, the provost, and the academic administration with the most rapidly growing department on the campus right now. So for life cycle analysis, we offer it as a upper division undergraduate course, and graduate students can receive credit through slash listing. The course goals are to provide students with a conceptual and practical understanding of the technique and how it can be applied to actually solve problems. We consider it as a key technical skill for undergraduate majors. My challenge as an instructor in designing this course was to find an accessible LCA software program that, quite frankly, beginning students could easily use that was affordable, that was data rich, and it was current, and it was not tied uh, to our overworked or highly used computer labs through software downloading. I discovered Sustainable Minds through an internet uh, search when I was designing the course. I first offered this course just in 2011 with uh, seven students. My enrollments quadrupled the following year to 28. <clears throat> what I do with the uh, LCA term assignment is to basically tack it on after the students have uh, so say gone through a standard textbook on life cycle assessment, principles, practice, and prospects, which is an Australian book and reflects the large variety of technical accomplishments that have been done in Australia since the Sydney Olympics. The students are provided, uh, I give them with internet addresses to at least half dozen different LCA reference documents, original research papers, and case studies that we discuss in class. The last 10 class periods, then, are devoted to the Sustainable Minds project. I give the students a complete month. Uh, for their project. I structure the term assignment around the Sustainable Minds Toaster, which is really designed as a tutorial for uh, new learners. It gives the students ample time to become familiar with the software, and they really begin to understand a large variety of ways to improve the toaster. Results uh, I demonstrate right here have been very impressive. Uh, some students take to the software readily, others a little slower. But one student turned in a report with over a dozen different toaster designs and fell in love with the program. Okay. 
I should point out that some students, however, were a little bit, uh, shall we say, challenged by the software and benefited tremendously from the ample time that we gave them to carry out the project. <clears throat> For the students, Sustainable Minds was critical in helping them understand what they had been reading in the textbook and what we were discussing in class. Uh, students were basically much better able to work when they could share uh, their accomplishments uh, in the computer lab. Uh, I was fortunate in having enough computer seats for them, but basically they had a number of questions about different materials and they benefited from interacting uh, with other students. The Sustainable Mind software helped the students to fully comprehend all of the issues germane to LCA and sustainably, uh, sustainability more generally. Several students began their paid subscriptions and others went around to basically literally broadcast what they had done in class to the faculty uh, if they were in different colleges. There we go. <clears throat> Until I came across uh, the Sustainable Mind software, I did not know if it was going to be possible to develop a cost-effective LCA course. The other programs I had seen were simply too expensive for my department's modest budget. And we already had a finite number of computer labs, and I could not expect to develop uh, the LCA course around downloaded software. When Sustainable Minds announced um, that they gave a trial period, I thought that was terrific, in part because starting a new course, I needed to be able to at least have the students access something they could use, and I couldn't convince the administration at that time that I needed the upfront cost if it was too significant. Now, students who like a course like to talk about it. I've heard extensively from other faculty how excited the students are, have gotten having taken the course, and it really gives them a strong focus on how to think about their future activities beyond the classroom. One of my students <laughs> indicated that having taken the course, she was very well prepared for her job interview where she was asked about life cycle analysis and let me know that she could answer all of the questions quite well and quite easily. The life cycle analysis really plays a central role in our undergraduate program. There is nothing like it elsewhere on campus. We have students from around the campus now in different colleges, largely architecture, and some in business who enrolled in the course and found it extremely helpful. We are envisioning with the master's degree program, I don't know, several dozen new students who will probably then be using LCA to advance their student research. And several in probably thesis research. When I discuss the course uh, with folks uh, off campus, I've had the interest of several professionals who have asked me if I could teach the course to them or how could they take the course on campus. And the other point uh, that I'd like to make in terms of trends is that this notion of developing student awareness of life cycle thinking uh, is manifested in the large-scale policy initiatives we see happening around the country, most typically through California's development of a low-carbon fuel standard, which is built around LCA principles. If we assume, and it's not unlikely, that we're going to see more applications of life cycle thinking in public policy, our students will be better able to address them and become involved in them. That I believe is okay. Thank you. <laughs> Finally caught up. One of the things that I'd like people to think about is that our undergraduate degree program had to provide evidence to our administration that the new program would be desirable to students and employers alike. And to this end, the Sloan Management Review survey of uh, the adoption of sustainability was extremely persuasive and helpful. 
We won support for our undergraduate degree program from uh, the university's College of Business Leadership, as well as officials in Oklahoma cities who are now becoming actively involved in their own urban sustainability issues. We consulted with several industry leaders in sustainability when we designed the curriculum, and we're really going to include more industry leaders as we reinvigorate our advisory board. I think as our academic program grows, we'll basically be uh, able to conduct more research that blends both public and private sector concerns together and because we see them as fundamentally interdisciplinary. And the software and the approach enables us to uh, benefit from both, uh, well, to actually exploit and integrate both aspects very well. And I believe that is uh, that for me. Thank you, Mark. That um, is such a great success story, and I, I love hearing you talk about the excitement that um, the students have demonstrated as they're doing things that um, in the past had seemed theoretical, and um, it's terrific to see the success you've had in building and expanding your program. Um, we're going to move right on to Nasser. And, uh, Again, uh, a completely different story, uh, which is super exciting to us to see the kind of diversity and the kind of results that um, educators are, are creating. So Nasser, take it away. Okay. Uh, thank you, Terry. Um, my name is Nasser Jalali. I'm a lecturer at SF State University. And I have joined to Department of Design and Industry about eight years. Prior joining to university, I've been basically managed several organizations and in senior level. What I did was in the classroom is basically in addition of what the concept of the course were, I brought real world of the product design. I brought the real world of the engineering into the classroom train and educate the students in the trend that when they go join in an organization, basically they could be able to easily handle their task and be creative. And uh, basically this trend has been ended up uh, basically um, moving me toward more technology courses that I taught in the department that uh, you could see the list of those courses that mostly involve with manufacturing and design environment. Um, personally, do believe in that, uh, as Mark has indicated, that the uh, state of California had passed a couple of years ago a bill called uh, Bill 32, Global Warming Solution um, uh, Act. Uh, that is going to be taking in, uh, impact in year 2020. So essentially what we should do is that as an educator to bring all these design and engineers and engineer students uh, into the level that when this act is being basically put in place, all these organizations in California and possibly somewhere else will be basically follow the suit, should have a staff and engineers design in line could understand this act, could be able to design product, will be greener perhaps and or uh, generate less carbon footprint. And then that will basically bring this knowledge basis into our undergraduate um, uh, program in the design and in particular uh, product design environment. And then we do have a graduate program, Industrial Art, that has basically student in the model with manufacturing technology topics and others. So we are basically handling these into two level of the courses in this department. One is industrial science, which is more involved with material properties. And basically we touch the base of the sustainability and carbon footprint and new material environment in this particular class. Uh, 
And then after that, we have basically created in the part one another course is called Design and Material, which is upper division course. It is required for undergraduate students, and there are also graduate students been taking these courses further, uh, and uh, basically the current uh, sustainability has been promoted in these classes. Um, that I have indicated that on DI210, which is industrial design, they basically uh, introduce the sustainable team green material into the design and uh, students are coming variety of uh, majoring and uh, mostly uh, from our own department, engineering department, and they are basically getting involved with the material side of it. That next uh, course that is going to be a, a DI340. Um, this particular course has been uh, basically involved um, more into industrial and uh, product design environment. And what we do is that basically take the course into the next level in addition of the design, re-engineering, and or innovation. We're looking to material side of it. And we want to make sure that these material side is being basically impact on the design. In addition of that, we took uh, a process of the manufacturing also into uh, projects level that could be able to impact on the thought process of the students, that how you could be able to bring a concept or innovation into the design level. So you have to look into material side and you have to look into basically the manufacturing process and also into uh, concentration. So um, most of the student is basically in this class involved with in, in weight the product and or basically generate the concept and ideation and evaluate the material and process, manufacturing process. And then certainly at the end, which is we are using the tool of the sustainable mind in a comparison of basically material side of it to be able to pick the right product that they could be able to generate with this particular product last carbon footprint. Here is a few example of the, what we have uh, done in this particular course, design and material. There were five, six projects and then basically we're introducing a couple of them in here. Uh, this particular uh, case is that they are inventing a, a new shower head and not even they're looking at basically green uh, process and green uh, material side of it. They're looking at more into uh, looking at the conservation. They're looking at uh, less water usage. And also they are looking at more uh, eco-friendly material side of it. And they are also looking into the level that how they could be able to use some energy in order to be able to generate such product. And uh, you could see some ideation on this particular uh, shower head. It has been basically looked at average shower head and then with their bill material, they calculated how much they are generating these particular standard product um, carbon footprint versus their, this particular screen shows that their carbon footprint is minimized. And next screen that you could see the comparison between standard product versus their uh, creation on the build material that it has been utilized and picked right materials such as uh, nickel and some other uh, polymeric material. And you could see, in fact, in this particular screen, the comparison, that regular shower head um, um, uh, generates approximately 0.91% uh, or a uh, uh, million parts uh, per hour on their basic product line versus uh, point 30 is that on new uh, concept with the new innovative uh, shower head. 
that this particular case that could generate approximately 67 percent improvement on the performance. And if you calculate all these, that is basically gives in each household could have a several of these um, shower heads. And if anybody could go to the direction of the greener shower head, and that will generate less water usage with the new technology they're introducing in this product. And also, certainly, that 67% improvement you multiply with the millions of the shower head global wide uh, usage. In addition of the technology that you could see that in prototype and that they have a timer for water usage, that timer could be visual or it could be audio that could warn um, consumer or uh, user that uh, you do have enough shower or water has been used or give them a warning that they should wrap it up the showering in order to save water in where the basic water is in uh, rash. And also in addition of that product, they looked at a packaging. They generate the packaging also as a green packaging recycled material. And that basically gives a kind of like a trend that what the act 32 will promote in state of California. So we're basically nurturing these students to be ready for that industries that who would require down the road with the product lines in consumer goods, high technology, innovation in uh, year 2020. Next project is quickly I could go that most of um, a practical environment that uh, this is a individual heater and student had basically looked into this product not even in material side of it, they looked at in the design that how they could be able to generate the heat with the last energy usage. In addition of that, having product built with a greener product. Here is a comparison between old um, or standard type of the heater versus new innovative uh, product. And uh, we could see that basically uh, it brought 88% improvement with this new material. And this 88% improvement is including energy use. That is basically what we promote and with the lower energy usage that could generate least uh, CO2 and that basically could be able to generate a greener product line by utilizing the right material, more reflective optical material, curve as far as geometrically, that basically heat when it has been generated and pushed out toward basically user. Um, they had uh, taken into consideration of the various technologies such as shut up switches on bottom in the base and some other electronic new generation of uh, that could be able to control energy usage in this particular consumer goods. Next project that we are going to introduce is that household goods and this is a very simple product the student is looked at it. And one reason they picked up this particular product is that they essentially looked at the global wide that we have approximately 7 billion population in the world. And if out of that 7 billion, 10% of those could have these mandolin in their household goods. And then if they could generate this product greener with the new concept, and then out of that 10% mandolin holders, if they use that greener product, impact in the world will be huge. And if I could go back to a previous screen as far as comparison, that you could be able to see that improvement on uh, CO2 or carbon footprint is about 69%. And imagine that all those number of the user, if you multiply that point 16, of 69% and the 
basic impact will be huge. They looked at through the tool that consumer basically this uh, sustainable mind and uh, basically determine that the right uh, material for the product. Student in this particular course has been learning to get familiar with the carbon footprint reduction. They're looking at the sustainable material environment. They're basically getting familiar with a design that could be implemented with the new law, uh, California Global Warming Solution Act. And basically that could take them educated and basically promote them to into a sustainable design and concern about carbon footprint. As far as educators, um, I believe that we have a, a trend in particular the act that we have in California. Educator will be looking at a segment of their courses in engineering and also in design environment that could be able to provide and use such a tool and or concept in coursework. And where basically we are moving with the trend of this course is that essentially I am basically moving into, uh, we're trying to promote through the different college of uh, San Francisco State University called College of Extended Learning. If we could be able to offer sustainability into the community, into the professional world, that those who had not an opportunity uh, to get familiar with this concept of uh, carbon footprint reduction, sustainability material, that will promote this education into professional world such as architects, such as engineers, industrial engineers and manufacturing, manufacturing engineers that could be able to educate it themselves and then could be implemented these process into their uh, workplaces. Well, thank you, Nasser. Um, that's really um, quite impressive, the range of, of sophisticated projects, as well as the thought process going into them, um, producing such a, a wide range of, of results. Um, at this point, I'd like to just summarize um, again, that while Sustainable Minds is easy to use, as Mark pointed out, uh, and as each educator has demonstrated, uh, there's a lot of thought and strategy that goes into the decisions about what you do with the results. At the end of the day, this is business analytics. Um, so building the models and using the software is not the hard part, it's understanding what to do with the results and how to make decisions that are supported by them. Uh, we have uh, quantity discount programs to uh, entice schools to not only buy software for classes but across departments and even uh, for the whole school. We've built a curriculum library to help uh, faculty get started and all of these uh, courses and projects have been donated by faculty already teaching with Sustainable Minds to be shared with uh, other faculty who simply want to get started. And I invite all of you, um, as Mark mentioned, uh, to get started with a free trial. Um, by the end of this month, uh, we're actually going to a 15-day free trial. So this week, uh, you can still get a 30-day free trial, but uh, 15 days turns out to be plenty to get going and, and uh, get some work done. And so I'd like to also direct you to our website. You can watch the uh, webcast and read about the uh, previous two webcasts we've had in this series, uh, hear from other educators. This replay will be posted uh, early next week uh, with a blog post summarizing this result. Uh, this particular broadcast. And again, you know, the, the focus really is about jobs in the economy, schools, adding curriculum, educating students to go out into the marketplace and, and make a difference. So I'd like to move into the um, Q&A section of uh, this webcast. And 
Uh, I'm going to start with a question uh, that, uh, Layla, maybe you can uh, kick off with, which is uh, when you start with uh, young students where uh, they haven't really learned how to design products yet, uh, how do you get them to think about the whole life cycle um, in contrast with teaching somebody who already knows about designing products and has come to the table with, uh, with a more constrained perception of the product life cycle? Uh, do you find that students will actively look at other parts of the life cycle, not just materials and processes? Um, maybe just do kind of a compare and contrast. Um, this is where the innovation really happens. Yeah, I think, look, I mean, obviously there's a number of different factors that influence how people learn, and, and students um, can equally have uh, their barriers to their ideas about things, just as uh, adults and professionals can as well. But I think getting to the crux of your question is how to get people to think holistically across the life of the, the different life cycle stages. I mean, traditionally, my work with professionals in the design product development industry, most people are focused very much on end of life and materials, as you stated. And students are quite similar as well, and, and getting them to overcome their own conceptual barriers about where environmental impacts occur. Um, I think we all have very similar perspectives on um, waste being a major environmental issue, when as most life cycle assessments and holistic environmental impacts um, kind of approaches demonstrate that waste isn't always, and in most cases, not the biggest impact area. So really getting people to challenge their um, preconceived ideas and assumptions, which are ultimately based on our experiences from the media and not necessarily scientific investigation, is one of the critical starting points, I find. And that, that really does apply to individuals, both you know students uh, across different age groups and professional practitioners. We need to question initially you know, how we see environmental impacts and we need to understand that everything that exists you know, has, a, has to uh, come from nature and go through a series of life cycle stages that ultimately have an impact on the natural environment. And it's through that assessment of, of all of the different life cycle stages that we start to be able to find where, as part participants in the production consumption cycle, we have the biggest sphere of influence. And, you know, and, and a student um, gets that is, as long as they get taken through that process of understanding the different stages and, and then they start to see that even though they are just a student, they have the capacity of making changes in the design decisions that they're making as equally does a professional practitioner. So I think it's really critical to start with the basics and then provide the, um, the learning environment that allows for the exploration of those concepts and I think that you know this, this process, that all of the examples that, that we've gone through today really demonstrates that guided learning experience and gets that outcome for the students. So building on that, um, Mark, you're, you're teaching in a, uh, in a very unique uh, kind of program that you're developing. Um, and what we've seen through this presentation is that clearly uh, designing greener products is an interdisciplinary and collaborative activity. Um, and you're training your folks to think this way and think from a systems perspective. What do you think is the opportunity for you to create interdisciplinary or collaborative projects or courses with uh, business and engineering faculty in your school? Oh, um, interestingly enough, uh, <laughs> one of the neat things, um, and, and I'd like to clearly communicate to their educators about this. My university is reflective, I think, of the most average universities in that it's oftentimes been called a smokestack university, that our College of Engineering sits in a building unto itself apart from everybody. The nice thing about this particular software and life cycle uh, analysis in general is it certainly lays out a very clear role for the different colleges, the different disciplines, and different perspectives to come together uh, and serves as a very effective format for reaching common agreement. I'm, um, 
uh, I'm, I'm really tickled uh, to be able to present an approach, a practical approach to students that uh, gives them the opportunity uh, to learn from it. Uh, by and large, their experience is driven by lectures, by books, even slideshows. And so this is a great opportunity for them to simply explore uh, aspects of the environment that they may not have already had. And so one of the things that I do, since I work in research projects with faculty around uh, campus, is it's very nice for us to start thinking about ways to expand the, the scope. And when we develop our graduate program, we'll be using this kind of vehicle probably to expand more inclusive uh, faculty involvement in our graduate program. Um, so just doing a time check, we're close to the top of the hour. And we did start a few minutes late. So for those of you that need to drop off, um, thank you for staying. Um, and attending. Uh, we'll take some questions and probably go about five minutes longer. If you have time to stay on, please stay with us. Um, I think, Layla, you do have to drop off now. And I did want to thank you for yeah, I do. Thank um, you. your time and um, sharing the work. It was just uh, incredibly beautiful. And um, for those of you uh, leaving, if you want to get in touch with Layla on your exit poll, you can let us know, put you in touch with Layla, and we'll do that. Uh, and otherwise, um, great job, Layla. Talk to you later. Um, great. Thank you. Moving on with a, a couple um, other questions, and I'm going to add my own in here. Both Mark, you, and Nasser talked about uh, taking this curriculum and expanding it and taking it out to the community. And uh, I've, I found that fascinating that given that you're both still working on developing curriculum and trying to get it uh, integrated and established in the university, that you're already looking at uh, taking it out and taking it into the professional practice community to offer you know, continuing education. So, I found that to be very entrepreneurial and and wondered uh, if you think uh, that that's possible and will that be another opportunity for schools in general to have an impact in their own communities and even create new sources of revenue? I, either of you can, can respond. Maybe Nash, you want to go first? Um, in fact, uh, yes. It will go in the community. We basically ideation was initiated with our chairman at the time a couple of years ago. Uh, Professor Holmes uh, has indicated that why don't we basically introduce into a um, sustainable society into the community that we might be able to help and serve out of the department site. And I looked and worked with uh, Professor Gomes on this issue. He had extensive, uh, basically, um, uh, work experience in um, several nations in this environment and gave an ideation. And essentially, I do believe in that this will work into College of Extended Learning, that we could be able to offer this course for professionals and engineers that uh, could be able to generate additional revenue, not even rev re this organization or institution, I should say, non-profit organization. Certainly, that revenue could be expanded. Uh, several other programs, perhaps down the road, and not even that. Basically, all the community will benefit. Understanding what is the impact of CO2 or reduction of the carbon footprint tools are available so we could be able to help the whole community and if not worldwide, at least in our own community. Mark, do you want to weigh in on this? Sure. I, I just wanted to uh, comment on this because the the most folks outside academe um, probably don't see the university very often as addressing issues that are in, immediately of importance to them. And part, part of our concern is we have a, a very effective continuing ed program here in Oklahoma. And the neat thing about a sustainability curriculum 
is that it gets the faculty and the students on a very contemporary uh, wavelength, if you will, a perspective of addressing immediate issues and future issues, which is somewhat novel. And consequently, the, the level of interest on the part of the urban areas in our state about what they can do to become more sustainability has grown. And I, I, I see this as an issue that's going to demand uh, expansion and uh, direct communication uh, from our program and programs like ours to a very growing, a widely growing public sector user community. That's really um, quite exciting um, because we found that not only are the manufacturers that we're working with interested in integrating environmental sustainability uh, and we're being introduced through product development organizations, uh, we're also finding now that people responsible for sustainability programs and knowledge and general training across the corporation are very interested in um, using sustainable minds to just get everybody into um, the mindset of uh, systems thinking, full product life cycle. And if uh, those folks in manufacturing companies can reach out to their local uh, colleges and universities to provide that, that's, uh, I think, a very powerful uh, connection of uh, academic and commercial partnership. I agree. Um, well, we're at 3.05 and um, you guys probably have classes to teach and people... I have, I have class to teach and then that class is coming about two, three minutes from now. All right. Well, then yes, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to wrap up and uh, again, thank you, um, Mark and Nasser, for taking the time to prepare your presentations and, and share your stories. And terrific work. It's very inspiring. And I'm sure everybody uh, on the webcast pretty much felt the same way. Um, I'm finishing on this curriculum library slide so you can see the range of, of uh, courses and, and projects in the different disciplines that uh, people are developing and that we have available. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to share it. So uh, again, on your way out of the webcast, there will be a, a survey that comes up. And if you're interested in, uh, again, connecting with any of the folks on the webcast uh, or connecting with us around um, subscriptions or curriculum, uh, please let us know. So thanks again for attending. And everybody have a great day. <laughs>